After you've been building some beginner programs in C, you'll start to realize that you want to build more complex programs, and these more complex programs require more and more variables. Like say you want to build a to-do list application, or say you want to build an application that categorizes your credit card transactions, you'll start to realize that you can't get away with just using arrays. You need something more complicated for your data structures. In my last video, I talked about the importance of developing a coding plan before you start building your application. And that coding plan is important because it gives you a clear understanding or clear vision for what kind of data structures you're going to have in your program. And then after you have those clear data structures in place, then you can put in some clear data logic and functionality for how to process that data. When I was in university, one of the first things that I learned with regards to data structures was structs. And once you know how to use structs in your programs, you can start to build more complex applications like that to-do list application that I was referring to or a budget application where you take your credit card transactions and categorize them. You can already start to build those kinds of applications once you know structs. So in this video, I'll be going over how to use structs in C and I'll go over an example on what a program would look like before structs and after so that you can really see the value and see how powerful structs are when it comes to building more complex applications. So my name is Henrik and I'm here to help you learn the software skills and tools you need to grow in your software development journey. Let's get started. By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. It's a free gift to you. In this coding challenge, I guide you in 30 days to build four programming projects and I give you some tutorials that are in C. But of course, these projects are really generic and really beginner friendly. And so you can actually code them in different programming languages. You can still benefit from this guide because you can just take the principles that are in my challenge and then apply them to your programming language. You can find the challenge in the link in the description. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. All right, so I have this program called grades.c and basically what it does is it has three students, Alvin, Bella, and Charlie, and basically it takes the exam scores, like the first midterm, or the second midterm, and their final exam scores, and then it averages them out to get the final grade for each student, and then it just prints the final grades for all of the students. And so this is what it would look like without structs. So we have a char, uh, a char array for their names, and their names are can only be up to 20 characters long. And then we have their their midterms. So we have to declare one, two, three variables for midterm one, three variables for midterm two, three for midterm for final the final exam, and three for the final grade. And so this just looks like a headache, right? It, there's so many variables that are defined here, and but it, it does get the job done. So let's run it. So it's able to calculate their grades. So Alvin's final grade is 91, Abella's is 84, and Charlie's is 79. So it's able to do the task, but the problem is it just looks so complicated and it could lead to a lot of confusion if you're building, your, if you're trying to make your program more complex, add more functionality to it. It's gonna be a lot, it's gonna be a headache trying to organize your data like this. All right, so the first reason why you should use structs in your program is because you're able to group related data together. For example, all of these uh, variables here on this in this column, those are all related to student one, and these are all related to student two, and these are all related to, to student three. So instead of having how many, there, there's like three by five. So instead of having 15 different variables defined here, we can just have three structs for each of these sets of variables. All right, so to define our structure, we're going to have three elements, the struct keyword, then the tag, which is gonna be the way we name our struct, and then the members of the struct. So let's use the keyword struct. So this tells our, our compiler that we're going to de de declare a structure, then we're gonna have the tag. So let's do student. And then we're gonna declare the members. So we need a char variable for the student name, or a char array for the student name. Then we're gonna have a double, for the first midterm. Then we're going to do another double for the second midterm. 
Then we're going to have the final exam and then the final grade. So these are the members. This is the tag and then this is the struct keyword. Then we need a semicolon at the end to finish the definition. All right, so now let's try using this struct in our actual main function. So let's do struct student and this will tell the program that we're going to use the structure that we just defined up here. Then we're going to declare the variable names. So student one, student two and student three. So here we declare three variables, student one, two, and three, and they're gonna be of type of this type of struct. Kind of like how we defined a double, we use the, we have these three variables and they're of type double. So likewise, we have these three variables and they're of type of this struct variable here. So now, now that we've defined those three structs, we can just get rid of this whole mess right here. And then we're going to, the way we access one of the members of the struct, for example, this student name, in order to access that element, we have to just do period. And then we use student name. Actually, let's remove student, let's just say name. So in order to access that element or that member of the struct, then we just do dot name. So what we're doing here is we're taking student one, that variable, and we want to use the name. So we're going to access this member of that struct and we're going to insert Alvin there. And likewise with student two and three. And likewise with for the midterms, we can just use the period as well to access those elements. So right here, we're just accessing this midterm one member of this struct. So what we're doing here is we're accessing the field midterm one and we're signing it 86. So now 86 is affiliated with student one and Alvin is affiliated with student one. So we now have 86 and Alvin are they're grouped together in one variable called student one. And so likewise, 78 corresponds with Bella and 70 corresponds with Charlie. And they're all stored in the same struct variable. Now they're all grouped together, like I mentioned. All right, now we can do the same for midterm two, and the same for final exam, and then the same for final grade. So here what we did was we get we got the midterm one of student one, we got the midterm two of student one, and we got the final exam of student one. We averaged them together to get the final grade for student one, and likewise for students two and three. And now we're going to print their final grades here. So we just have to access the name and then access the final grade. And then we'll have the same exact result that we had that we saw earlier. All right, so there you go. We have the same exact printout that we had earlier. We have the, the same calculations, but you see how much simpler our code looks like. So instead of having those, all those, those 15 variables defined, we just have three. So we have these three variables here. We can actually consolidate them into one array. So we can just declare an array of size three since we have three students and we can just get rid of all of these, these variables here. We will just have one array and then we can access just the first element of the array and then the second element of the array and then th the third element of the array. Okay, so I replaced all of those variables with just the array elements. And so let's run this and see what happens. All right, so we get the same exact result. And so now our code looks a lot cleaner. And you see this, this part here with the 0, 1, 2, and then the 0, 1, 2 here. We can actually, that looks very familiar, right? You can actually just use a for loop there. Okay, so I replaced them with for loops and then let's see what happens. All right, there you go. So we had the same exact results as earlier. All right, so there's a way that we can actually make this look even prettier. And I don't know if this really matters to you, but instead of using struct student all the time, we can use type def. And type def is just to wait, another way of making an alias for, a, for the struct itself. So instead of using struct student all the time, we can just create an alias uh, student. All right, so what's happening here is instead of using struct student when we define our variables here, we can just use student to define it. And that's the alias we're going to use. So let's just replace this with student. All right, there you go. So that looks a little nicer, right? So let's run this. And there you go. You get the same result. 
and we can actually make this even nicer so instead of doing doing it separate separating the type def out from the actual struct we can just combine it here so we'll do type def there you go so we get rid of that part and so you run it and you get the same result so now you can just you can use that instead of using struct student all the time all right so just to recap originally we had like 15 variables defined here earlier but now we only have one variable here that's defined and we we declare it with size 3 and it's an, it's an array of a, a struct variable called student and so it has the name the midterms the final exam grades and then it calculates the final grade and then we assign the values here and then we do the calculation here and then we print out the results here and then you run it and then there you go you get the calculation for the final grades and one, one of the nice things about this is that you can actually you can actually increase this number to say like 100 so you can actually grade this 100 students uh, final grades this way instead of doing instead of declaring like five for five very different variables for every student so this would have been like 500 students now we only have to declare one array of student size 100 and we can use this program to calculate all the final grades so that's the beauty of using structs all right that's it for this week's video i hope it really helped you out in understanding structs and how to start using structs in your programs and again structs are really valuable because they help with code readability code maintainability code scalability code code reusability all these abilities when it comes to your code and it can help you really go to the next level in terms of building more complex projects. All right, like I mentioned earlier, if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start, you can download my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a 30 day guide where I teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects. It's really beginner friendly and I go step by step on how to build each one and then go through the tutorials that you need to build each one. So download that in the link in the description. All right, so I wanna hear from you too. How are you gonna start using structs in your applications? Leave a comment down below how are you gonna start using it. And if you've downloaded my programming guides, my personalized finance app programming guide or my 30 day beginner coding challenge, you can already see that you can start using structs in that to-do list application or that budget application that I was talking about. All right, thanks for watching this week's video. I hope it really helped you out. And if it did help you out, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.